Today is a special day, and it's bigger than we think. Because there are many different kinds of fathers, and they all need to be recognized and honored today. Today, we honor those fathers who consistently strive to balance loving their wives and children with being good, godly workers at their jobs. May you feel the pleasure of God. Today, we honor those dads who had poor fathers themselves, but who have committed never to become the father they grew up under. May your children continue to be guarded from any of the hurt you carry. Today, we honor the fathers who are older and who no longer have day-to-day -day obligations to their own children. May the family gatherings this weekend make you feel like you could do it all over again. Today, we honor the adult children of fathers who are absent. May the God of the fatherless become your father in ways you've only dreamed of. And may you believe with your whole heart that his leaving wasn't your fault. Today, we honor men who have no children of their own, but who father younger men as mentors and guides. May you see your important roles as impacting and life-changing. And finally today, we honor fathers who have passed away. May their good deeds live on through you, and may their careless deeds be corrected in your lifetime. Today is a special day. So for all the fathers we mentioned, and even those we didn't, be honored, be blessed, and be joyful. We believe that you have what it takes to change the world and you're doing it one relationship at a time. Happy Father's Day.
Father's Day! Good morning, Church. Blessed Father's Day to all the daddies among us. Welcome back to our online service. Before we begin, please remember to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now do feel free to share this video if you know of someone who may be blessed by it. Now for a time of worship, take it away, Brother Alan Law. Hi, good morning, Church. Welcome to the Church of Praise online service. Uh, before we start, uh, I'd like to read uh, the Word of God, so let's read it together. This text is taken from the uh, book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 22 to verse 27. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. So church, as we're going to worship the Lord in the song called The Blessings taken from this text, let's proclaim these blessings with our lips upon our nations, upon our family members and upon ourselves. Uh, and may Lord continue to minister to our hearts with His words and may His grace and peace shalom be upon us. Let's pray. Oh, Father Lord Jesus, we'd like to commit this time to your hands, O oh God, as we seek you, O oh Lord, that you minister to each and every one of us, O oh God, as we proclaim these blessings, O oh God, upon those people around us, O oh Father, upon our family members and upon the nations, O oh Lord, that your blessings shall go forth, your grace, your peace, shalom, shall go forth and minister to each and every one of them, O oh Father. Lord bless us, O oh God, I pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. His favor 
be upon you and a thousand generations in your family in your children and your children and your children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family in your children in their children in their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 he is for you
praise to see the nations worship you. Just as I am, 
Thank you, Brother Allen. Church, while we may not meet physically, we thank you for your faithfulness in giving unto our Lord God Almighty. Your giving has enabled the church to serve the community, especially those going through these challenging times. Now let's bless the Lord what we have purpose in our heart. If you are new, please don't feel pressured to give. It is especially for believers of Christ. As Christians, we believe that offering is part of giving back to the Lord, a portion of what He has already given us as a form of worship. Please join me in a prayer to bless the offering. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your unfailing love, your unending mercy and grace in our life. We want to thank you for your words in Psalm 37, 18 to 19. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care and their inheritance will endure forever. In time of disaster, they will not wither. In the days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. So even in this season, without hesitation, we gladly give to you what is already yours. Bless the cheerful givers. Bless these tithes and offerings. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Now for our first announcement. For those who love Bible study, please get your notepad ready. We have an upcoming Bible study by Brother David Lim. Brother David is currently the Academic Dean at X College where he has taught for over 10 years. It is his desire and passion to help believers understand God's message and encounter God's presence through his word. His Bible study entitled The Hope of the Gospel Beyond Waiting for the End is taken from Matthew 24, 25, and it is sure to bring you new insight to the scripture. His classes will take place via Zoom every Wednesday evening in the month of July. To sign up, please connect with Sister Tio Hui Ling by 28th of June. Next, a special needs workshop entitled Understanding Children with Special Needs by Mark Lim is happening this month. Taking place on 27th of June, this workshop is especially meant for parents, teachers and caregivers who are managing children who are requiring special attention. Workshop will focus on sensory learning, behavior learning, and how to develop a sensory diet. The closing date is today. Don't miss out on this opportunity and sign up now by reaching out to our children ministry leader, Brother Anthony Xiao. We thank God for providing for the mission field through your faithful giving. The Lord stretches our faith in all seasons, even this one. We are excited to announce that we are close to achieving our mission budget. But church, we're not quite there yet. 
as the mission budget for 2020 is 180,000. If you have not pledged to mission, may I encourage you to participate in God's exciting work outside our borders. Do you know that our cell groups members faithfully met online to discuss our weekly sermon and just to catch up? We are so happy to share the growth in our cell despite the MCO restriction. I myself am part of a new cell in Larkin area. On top of that, even our senior citizen group, The Golden Legacy, is now meeting online too, on every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. If you are still without a cell, we encourage you to be part of one. You are never too young, too old, too new, too shy to join a cell group. Please visit www.churchofpraise.org.my slash cellgroups to be introduced to our available cell groups. For those who have a prayer need, do connect with us to pray with you. Please reach out to us. All the requests will be private and confidential. Last but not least, in case you've forgotten, Pastor Michael Yeo will be serving us communion at the end of the service. I hope you have your emblems ready. Now, this is the moment we are waiting for. Last week, we were blessed to receive the words from Pastor Michael Yeo in his sermon entitled, Coping We Change. He broke down the three A's we need in our life in order to successfully cope with change. They are acknowledgement, adjustment, and acceptance. If you have missed it, do visit our Facebook, YouTube, and website to catch it. This week, we are so blessed to have Pastor James Tan from Full Gospel Church, JB, with a special words for our fathers. We believe his sermon entitled, Celebrating Dads is going to speak to your hearts and minister to you. Enjoy the rest of the service. A very good morning to every one of you. Today is a very special day. And I want to wish all fathers a very happy and a very blessed Father's Day. On this very special occasion, I want to bring you an important message entitled Celebrating Dads. Why celebrate dads? Well, it is because of the commandment that God has given to us. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3, it tells us that we are supposed to honour our father and mother. Today, we we'll just focus on honouring our father. You know, this commandment was given to us when Moses ascended to Mount Sinai and was given the Ten Commandments. The first four commandments was directed towards God. The next six commandments was directed towards mankind. And the first among these six commandments was to tell us that we are supposed to honour our father and mother. To honour our father means to revere them, to respect back them. And the Bible wants to motivate us to honour our Father. And so God tells us that this is a commandment with a promise. What is this promise? Verse 3 says that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. How many of you want a good life? That all may go well with you. How many of you want a long life? That you may live long on the earth. You know how you can get a good and long life? Both the quality as well as the quantity of life? Well, you have to follow the instruction that is given to us by God. And that is to honour our father and mother. And this is where it is honouring our parents is such a blessing. And then when I look into the New Testament, the word honour in Greek carries the idea of valuing treasuring, cherishing our Father. And so honouring our parents, honouring our Father should not be a burden, should not just be a task, something that we have to do, but it is something that we enjoy, something that we are willing to do cheerfully, joyfully. Hence, we need to celebrate our debts. But I'm not sure about you. When I was growing up, I really had difficulty honouring my Father. At one time, in fact, our relationship with one another was very broken. How did I overcome that? Well, I believe that one of the things that will lead us to overcoming those walls 
or, or, or the, the barriers that stop us from honouring our debts is by first understanding them. And brothers and sisters, I want you to know this. It is really tough to be a dad. I'm not sure about you, but in my own journey as a father, I've got three children, the oldest of which is already 28 years old, and the youngest is 23. And trying to raise them as a dad, uh, as I recall my experiences, they were very, very challenging, very, very difficult. You know, once I asked my congregation this question, how many would think it is easy to be a dad? Guess how many people put up their hands? Only one person. And then I asked them the other question, how many of you think it is very difficult to be a dad? And guess what? Everybody else put up their hands. And I concluded that maybe the one who put up his hand was just trying to encourage the younger men, those who have not got married, to say, it's okay, get married, have children, can, 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 you can be a dad. But the truth is, being a dad is challenging. Why is being dead so tough? Well, it's tough because even godly men have failed. When you look at two persons, the first is Eli. Eli is the penultimate judge, the second last judge from the judges' era, and he was also the mentor for Samuel. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 17, it tells us that this sin of the young man young men referring to the sons of Eli, was very great in the Lord's sight. They did not just commit sin, they committed a great sin. In fact, they committed a very great sin. What was this very great sin that they committed? The Bible goes on to say that they were treating the Lord's offering with contempt. They scorned the Lord's offering. They looked down on the Lord's offering. They treated the Lord's offering as something unimportant. Well, in the Old Testament, when someone brings an offering to God, an animal offering, the animal is killed and then the fats of the animal is offered to God, consumed by fire. But the sons of Eli will go to these offerings and take the meat, the raw meat with the fats that was meant for God still in them unto themselves to do as they please. When these offerings refuse to give this meat over to them, they will take it by force. When you take something by force, you are robbing. And who did they rob? They robbed God because this fat was meant for God. And on top of that, in verse 22, the Bible tells us they actually slept with the woman who served at the entrance of the tent of meeting. The sons of Eli committed grave and terrible sins because they were greedy. They dishonored God and they committed adultery. And Eli was made responsible for the sins of his sons. In 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 13, God rebuked him and said he failed to restrain them. He failed to restrain his sons. Meaning that there was possibly something he could do, but he did not do them. He didn't stop them. And not only he did not stop them, in fact he participated in their sins. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 29, it says, Why do you honour your sons more than me? By fattening yourselves. Who is included in this yourselves? Of course, it would include Eli's sons. And because this statement was made to Eli, and so it would include Eli as well. What probably happened was that the sons, after taking the meat and the fats that belonged to God, cooked it and offered it to the father. And what did the father do? The father ate the meat and the fats that was meant for God. Let us look at another person. He's none other than King David. He's the singer, the poet, wrote much of the Psalms. He was also a warrior, remember? He killed Goliath. And he was also a great king, one that is revered by the people of Israel. But there's one particular area that he did not do very well, and that was being a father. Let us look at what happened to his children. His son, Amnon, rapes his half-sister, Tama. The brother of Tama was so upset about this, but his father did nothing. And so, Absalom decided to take things into his own hand. 
and arranged a party and through that party killed Amnon. He was so sure that the father would be angry and maybe punish him, but the father did nothing. And so there's no closure in this matter. Absalom made several attempts to talk over this matter with the father, but the father refused to see the son. As a result, the son got upset, got rejected, and later on planned a rebellion against the father. And as a result of the rebellion, Absalom was killed. But the story did not end there. David had another, another son by the name of Adonijah, and Adonijah also rebelled against David and appointed himself as king. Brothers and sisters, it's really tough to be a father when you think of such godly men and godly men have failed. Why is it so tough to be a father? Because there's great expectation placed on fathers. I searched through the internet and very quickly I was able to find the 10 roles that was expected of a dad. He's supposed to be a procreator, a priest, a protector, a provider, a teacher, a playmate, a companion, a trainer, a talent developer, and a servant. Father's role is so diverse and so numerous. And they have to do every one of this well. And when they fail at either one of these, they are frowned upon. And of course, it is tough because all these roles that are played by the father is so important. According to a research done by the University of Maryland School of Medicine, they found out that children who have fathers in their lives learn better, have higher self-esteem, and show fewer signs of depression than children without fathers. Not only the roles are diverse and numerous, the roles they play is also very important. So can you imagine the pressure upon the fathers? If you were to come to my house, I'll be very happy to offer you a drink. And that would be stress-free for me because, well, it is easy, you know? Nothing can be easier than offering someone a drink. But the same task is complicated when and if the Sultan comes to my house and I have to offer him a drink. I think if I had to do that, then my heart would be beating very, very fast. I'll be very anxious, I'll be very worried because of this pressure. And so maybe that's how fathers feel because of the great task, the great burden that is placed upon them. And you know, sometimes the role of a father is made even more complicated because fathers are often compared to mothers. Well, they are both involved in parenting. The mother does part of the parenting, the father does part of the parenting. And very often, a father is measured according to the way the mother does parenting. But I feel that this comparison is both unnecessary and unfair because fathers and mothers are so different. They are built differently. They have different roles to play. And even if they do the same thing, they'll do it in a different way. Just look at fathers and mothers. Let me show you some slides. For example, with regards to education. When a mother does education, she does it print and proper. I remember the time when my wife had to educate the children. Oh, she would go through great detail, write down, uh, uh, coach them, as well as, as, as mock up, uh, do mock-up papers for them uh, to, to practice. When I do education with the children, it is quite a different story. It is an exploration. It is an adventure. What about giving baby a bath? When a mother gives baby a bath, the mother will be very careful and make sure the baby will be totally cleansed. All the areas of the body that needs to be cleansed, the mother would do it. But when a father takes the baby for a bath, it is a totally different story. Just look at this picture. What about shopping? When mommy takes the baby for shopping, the mommy is careful to put the baby in a proper place in the trolley and then go about her shopping, put the rest of the goods in the trolley itself. But when the father takes the baby for shopping, it's quite a different story. I know 
because I've done the same thing in this picture. Why bother to push the pram and also the trolley? The pram can, dump, can, can be used as a dual purpose. And well, baby doesn't mind because they don't know any better. When a child tries to have a conversation with the mum, the child can talk to the mum about many different things. Mum, where's my jumper? Mum, is dinner ready? Mum, you know, I'm very upset with my friend. Mum, I'm not feeling well. I'm down, I'm sad, I'm ill. Mum, can you lend me some money? Mum, can I go out with my friends? Mum, uh, uh, where is my school fees? But when the child goes and talk with the dad, what kind of conversation do you think the child will have with the dad? Usually, in most cases, it will be like this. Dad, where is mom? And if the child were to ask the dad any of the questions he directed at the mother earlier on, guess what is the dad's response? Go and ask your mom. And when the child go and ask your mom, ask the mom, what is the mom's response? Has this ever happened in your family? If it had, please don't put up your hand. Ayah, your dad useless one lah, good for nothing one lah, don't know anything ah. When it comes to parenting, mothers really have a head start because they are the ones who carry the baby to full term, the whole nine months. And when the baby is born, the mother is the one who breastfeed the baby. And traditionally, the home is the mother's turf. They are the one who established the system at home. They are the one who decide how the baby is supposed to be bathed, how the baby is supposed to be dressed, how the baby is supposed to be fed, how the baby is supposed to be educated, how, you know, and where the things in the home is supposed to be placed and kept. And so naturally, when the child needs anything because he's so dependent and he grows up in this motherly system that he will always go to the mother instead of the father. And that is why it is really unfair to view parenting just from the perspective of the mother because the role and the way the father function is so different. It is really tough to be a father with the numerous and important roles and especially when godly men have also failed miserably in this area. It's really not easy to be a dad. I know the many times I failed as a dad and in my own eyes, my dad also failed miserably. When I was about 18 years old, I made a decision not to ever speak to my dad again. I was so angry, I was so upset with him. I'm not sure whether you have the same problem, whether you have the same kind of wall, the same kind of barrier between you and your dad. And if you do, how do you get out of it? Well, the one thing that I have to do was to learn to forgive my dad. Well, I, I was in a Bible class. I cannot even remember what class it was. The speaker was preaching. There was about 60 people in the class. And in the midst of that preaching, in the midst of that class, the Spirit of God came upon me and I started to shake. I started to tremble. I was holding on to the chair and the whole chair began to tremble. And soon, the focus and the attention of the other uh, 59 or 60 people was all on me. I disrupted the entire class. And on that day, the class had to stop because the Spirit of God was working in my life. And in the midst of that, God was speaking to me, you must forgive your dad. And actually, I didn't even know what I had to forgive my dad about. Because as I thought about what my dad could offend me, I could not find a single reason because my dad was a very good dad. And as I will continue to explore this area on what I needed to forgive my dad, I came to the realization that my dad offended me because he was absent from my life. You see, he was a gambler. And he would actually spend much time away from the family gambling. And so the times when I needed him to be around, he was not there. The times when I needed care from him, he was not there. 
the times when I needed comfort from Him, He was not there. The times when I needed instructions or encourage from, encouragement from Him, He was not there. And therefore, my debt was not really a debt to me. And because of that, I was angry, I hated Him, I made the decision to not ever speak to Him again. But God told me, you need to forgive Him. And on that day, I forgave my debt. Did everything suddenly change because I forgave my debt? No, because change is a process. My debt continued to make mistakes. And I managed to overcome because I learned a very important principle. And the principle is found in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. It says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I realized then that my dad, just like me, is an imperfect human being. And because he's imperfect, he will do things that are imperfect. Imperfect things are otherwise known as mistakes. And so even though my dad was not fully transformed, my dad changed to a much better dad many years after that. But in the early years, he continued to make many mistakes. He continued to be absent from my life. But I was able to cope with it because I understand this very important principle that he is not a perfect human being. And because he's not perfect, he would make mistakes. When I could accept that, when I learned how to accept that, I was no longer angry with him when he made mistakes. And I also realized that my dad is a product of a fallen world with flawed parents. You see, how did my dad end up gambling? It was my grandfather, his dad, who took him to the gambling den. And as a result of his interaction and growing up in that environment, he became a gambler. And so when I look at my dad's weakness, I also learned not to blame him. And as a result of that forgiveness, this rock that was weighing heavily upon me, this burden, this barrier was broken. I could release my dad from this unforgiveness. I could release my dad from this bondage. And gradually, I became happier with my dad's performance as a father. Well, we need to honour our dad. We also need to enjoy them. Forgiveness will set you free so that you can enjoy your debt. How can we enjoy our debt? There are five things I want to quickly talk to you about. Number one, think about the good times. This is a picture of my daughter with my dad and also my wife. She was only one years old. And Emily puts up this picture, thinking about the good times she has with, my, with her grandfather, my dad, after my dad passed away for six years. And so when you think about your dad, when you think well, when you think about those fond memories, naturally, when you meet with your dad, you'll be happy. You'll be happy to see him. You'll be joyful. You want to connect with him. But if you only focus on the negative, on the bad things, on the wrong things they have done, then when you meet with them, you'll be upset. You'll be angry. Or maybe you don't even want to meet with them. And so when I think about the good times I have with my dad, I have a few fond memories. One of them was when my dad took me for haircuts. When I was younger, my dad is the one who was responsible for this. And I enjoy going with him. Not because I enjoyed the haircut, because after you cut your hair, your hair will be all prickly and will be poking every part of your body and it's so uncomfortable. But I enjoy what comes after the haircut. Because after the haircut, my dad would actually take me to a stall where they sell kambing soup. My dad was the one who introduced me to kambing soup. He would tell me, don't eat the meat. The meat is too fibrous. Teochew people say, pork, pork, you know, it's not so nice. But my dad would introduce me and say, you must eat the, the, the knuckle of the lamb. And that is where the tendons are. Eat the kaki and also eat the tongue. These are the delicious part. My dad is also the one who brings me to get my teeth treated. You know, when you're about six to seven years old, you lose all your teeth, all your milk teeth, so to speak. I did not 
enjoy the experience of seeing the dentist. I'm sure none of us do because you know all the drilling and uh, uh, it can be so painful. But I enjoyed the time I went out with my dad because in HSA, near where the dental clinic is, there used to be a stall that sells very nice Teo and sells very nice Malay Kueh. And so that is the only place and the only time I can eat we can eat this mele kueh and also drink teo and it's with my dad. So I have many fond memories of my dad. My dad took me fishing. Although we didn't catch any fish, I still remember that trip together with him. I remember a trip uh, to, to go for an excursion with my dad. So think about the good times. The more you can think about the good times, the more fond you will be of your dad. Secondly, spend time with them. Call them, talk to them, especially during this Father's Day period. How do you know you have re really spent time with them? Why do you want to spend time with them? Spend time with them so that you can understand them. Do you understand your dad? How do you know whether you understand your dad or you don't understand your dad? Do you know what makes your dad happy? Do you know what makes your dad sad? Well, you can, well, in the conversation that you have with your dad, you can ask them what are the happiest moments of their lives. I've actually asked my dad this same question before. And his answer to me was this. He's so happy that all the children have grown up, have had their education, and are all involved in gainful employment, and that they're all doing well both in terms of work as well as moral character. And he said this to me. He said, I can die anytime and I can die peacefully. So do you understand your dad? Do you know what makes them happy? Do you know what makes them sad? The third thing that's very important is to do what they enjoy. Talk to them. Take them on a trip. Take them for a meal. Buy groceries with them. Watch TV with them. Uh, one time, my dad came to my house and uh, he stayed in my house for several days and I noticed this very interesting thing about him. He enjoys watching Taiwanese drama serials. For the life of me, I cannot understand why someone would enjoy watching Taiwanese drama serials because to me, Taiwanese drama series are so long. They run for hundreds of uh, episodes and sometimes it takes several episodes just to move through one scene but because my dad enjoyed it I spent time sitting beside him just to watch him watch this Taiwanese drama serial and as I spent time with him to do what he enjoyed one night it was after one of these drama serial that he opened up and talked to me well, my dad enjoys eating. And so whenever I find something that is tasty, I'll be very keen to buy that thing as a takeaway and bring it to his house for him to taste. The reason why I show you this picture, because this is his favorite food, the pork knuckle, the braised version. The fourth thing you can do for your dad is to appreciate them for what they've done. Have you ever said thank you to your dad? Have you ever given any words of encouragement to them? Have you ever given them gifts to tell them that they are important in your life? A word of thanks can go very far. You know, when my children appreciate me for what I've done for them, I feel very happy. Even though it is just simple words, thank you. How difficult can that be? But when my children say thank you to me, when I cook something nice for them, I will remember those words. And I will know that this is their favorite dishes. And whenever they come home, I'll be very keen to put in effort to make sacrifices just to cook for them. Your words of appreciation, your words of gratitude can go a long way to boosting your dad's self-esteem.
to boosting their confidence. And finally, number five, pray for them. Pray for God's blessings to appear upon them. Pray for God's wisdom. Pray for God's strength. By their own strength, they will not be able to be a good dad, much less a perfect dad. But with God with them, with God giving them His wisdom, with God directing them, with God guiding them, they will change and they will become better and they will be transformed from glory to glory and they will become better dads. And so this morning, I want to end with a prayer for all fathers. Shall we pray? Lord, we want to pray for all our fathers. We want to thank you for giving our fathers to us. Lord, help us to see how tough it is to be a good father. Help us to forgive them for the errors that they have made, for the failures of being a father. Because they are human and human makes mistakes. And Father, this morning, we want to bless all our fathers. We want to pray for your strength to be upon them. We want to pray for your grace to be upon them. We want to pray for your wisdom to be upon them. Father, we want to commit all our fathers into your hand and we want to pray that you give them good health and help them to be strong and happy. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor James, for that awesome Father's Day message. Well, as a father myself, I felt understood and encouraged by what I have just heard from the message. And as a son, I now have a greater appreciation for my own father and in fact, for all fathers. And I'm sure you too have been blessed by the message in a personal way. I challenge you to do something special for a father you know today. Now, this is the time for our online communion. I trust you are all ready with your prepared items. Well, let me begin by quoting a passage from 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 29. The Apostle Paul wrote, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that He was betrayed, He took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and He said, This is my body which is for you, and do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, He took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood and do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes so then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the lord everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup for those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. As we come to the communion table, there are three things that we should remember according to what I said just now. Now, first is we should look back. We are to participate in communion in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though we must be reverent and must be appreciative of what communion symbolizes communion also speaks of intimacy and fellowship and so we look back we look back to the cross we remember what christ accomplished for us 2000 years ago and we are reminded of his love for us and secondly we are to look ahead look ahead the scriptures say to do this until jesus comes again Jesus will come again. The first time Jesus came to this earth, He came as the suffering servant. The next time He will come as the conquering king. And communion is an observance to remind us that Jesus will come again. And thirdly, communion is a time to look within. We are to look within and ask the Holy Spirit to show us 
any areas of our life that may not be pleasing to God. And once we acknowledge these areas, we are to confess, ask for God's forgiveness and repent of those sins. And to fail to do so, the scripture says, and then to take part in communion is to eat and drink without honouring the body of Christ. So today, let us come to the communion table in joy. Come in reverence, come in honesty. If there is something that is not right, this is the time to deal with it. Communion is an ideal time to make a commitment for all recommitment to Jesus Christ. Let's now hold the bread and the cup that you have prepared and let us pray before we partake the emblems together. Lord Jesus, we bow before you in humility and ask you to examine our hearts today. Show us anything that is not pleasing to you. Reveal any secret pride, any rebellion, unforgiveness that may be hindering our relationship with you. We know that we are your beloved children, having received you into our heart and life and having accepted your death as penalty for our sinfulness. The price you paid Cover us for all time and our desire is now to live for you. As we take the bread representing your life that was broken for us, we remember and celebrate your faithfulness to us and to all who will receive you. We cannot begin to imagine the agonizing sufferings of your crucifixion, yet you took that pain for us. You died for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your extravagant love and unmerited favour. Thank you that your death gave us life, abundant life now and eternal life forever. As you instructed your disciples, we too receive this bread in remembrance of you. And in the same way, as we take this cup representing your blood poured out from a splintered cross, we realise that you were the supreme sacrifice for all our sin, past, present and future. And because of your blood shed for us and your body broken for us, we can be free from the power and penalty of sin. Thank you for your victory over death. You took the death that we deserve. You took our punishment. Your pain was indeed our gain. And today we remember and celebrate the precious gift of life you gave us through the blood that you spilled. Each time we take communion, Lord, we want to recommit our life, our heart, our thoughts, our everything to you. Fill us today with your powerful spirit. And when we have taken the emblems, help us to hold this fresh remembrance and the story that never grows old close to our hearts. Help us to share its message faithfully as you give opportunity. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now let's partake of the emblems together now in one spirit, in one accord, together with the family of God all over, beginning with the bread. And now let's take the cup together. Let us now take a moment to thank the Lord Jesus for this communion before I pronounce the benediction over you. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do His will, working in us that which is pleasing in His sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So God bless you and once again a blessed Father's Day to all you fathers out there. We appreciate you and we encourage you to continue to fulfil God's high calling on your life to lead your family. And now that we have all been blessed, please remember to like our page, subscribe to our channel or forward today's sermon to someone you know who needs to hear it. See you again next week.